Hi, my name is Mark Vitunik, and I'm a design manager in the Power Products Group here at Linear Technology. Today, I'm going to talk about our latest IC for active balancing of series connected battery stacks, the LTC3305 Lead Acid Battery Balancer. Now, I did say battery balancer, not cell balancer. In the world of lead acid, cell refers to an internal section of the battery comprised of parallel plates immersed in electrolyte. A standard 12-volt car battery, for example, contains six internal cells. We are not talking about balancing those cells. We are talking about balancing entire batteries. Currently, there are no good ways to balance lead acid. And there are skeptics out there who will tell you that lead acid batteries don't even require balancing, that they can't be overcharged, and that they self-balance. These skeptics are wrong. Series-connected lead-acid batteries do require balancing, and after showing you what happens when you don't balance, I'm going to show you why the LTC3305 is the best solution to both extend battery life and increase runtime performance. Have you ever wondered why the single lead-acid battery in your car lasts five, six, maybe seven years, but the series stack of lead-acid batteries in your home or office uninterruptible power supply, or UPS, needs to be replaced every one to two years. And this is despite the fact that your car battery is subject to extremes of temperature and vibration, a battery's worst enemies, while your UPS sits quietly under your desk at a constant cozy temperature and is seldom called upon to service a load. Let's take a look at what's going on here. In the case of the single lead acid battery, charging or recharging it is straightforward. Charging algorithms, make decisions based solely on the battery voltage. The LTC4020 battery charger IC, for example, is a high-performance solution and operates in the following modes. Precondition, absorption or constant current, CC, float or constant voltage, CV, and bulk restart. Transitions between modes are made based on the battery voltage. Now, what do you do if you have more than one battery in series? On the right, a stack of four batteries is being charged at four times the voltage of a single battery. Unfortunately, without monitoring the intermediate voltage points, and hence the differential voltage of each battery, there is no guarantee that they will split the stack voltage evenly. Over time, the voltages will drift apart, primarily due to unequal self-discharge currents of each battery. Eventually, the system will reach a point where while the lowest voltage battery is still coming up to full charge, the other three batteries are over voltage. Some users try to compensate by overcharging the stack in order to bring up the voltage of that lowest battery. But trying to balance in this way does more harm than good. At this point, the charger starts cooking the electrolyte in the other batteries. This can lead to excessive heating, premature shedding of plate oxidation material, and loss of electrolyte. Wow, I sure wouldn't want that happening to my batteries. Ultimately, the life of those batteries, and hence the entire pack, is shortened. The only way to prevent this from happening is to keep the voltages balanced. And this is why you need the LTC3305. So how does it work? Each battery in the stack is individually and sequentially connected in parallel with an auxiliary cell. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit using a network of 10 external low RDS on NMOS transistors controlled by the LTC3305. If the voltages are different, current will flow in the appropriate direction until the voltages of the individual battery and the auxiliary cell are equal. The LTC3305 then commutates to the next battery in the stack. This sequence continues, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, until all batteries in the stack and the auxiliary cell are voltage balanced to within a specified threshold. The maximum amount of current permitted to flow during any connection is limited by an external positive temperature coefficient, or PTC, thermistor element. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit as well. On the right are the voltage and current waveforms from an actual test run in our lab. We set the starting voltages at 11, 12, 13, and 14 volts to represent an extreme case of imbalance. As you can see, the LTC3305 drives the voltages into convergence, and below, the balance current tapers off as the voltages get more and more equal. 
The PTC is a device that looks like a resistor for small voltage differentials when small currents are flowing. But if the current increases to a certain trip point, referred to as the Curie point, a further temperature increase causes its resistance to increase nonlinearly so as to behave like a constant power device. It therefore serves as a protection device by reducing the current for large voltage differentials. This is important during the beginning of balancing when the PTC may be required to trip many times. Near the end of balancing, it will not trip at all. Because the number of trip cycles is indeterminate, only ceramic PTCs should be used, as these have virtually unlimited cycle life. The auxiliary, or aux cell, can be any two-terminal device that can hold charge, such as a high-voltage capacitor, a supercapacitor stack, a smaller capacity lead-acid battery, or a fifth lead acid battery of the same capacity. Now it may seem that introducing a fifth battery to the system adds considerable cost, but this is not the case. The capacity of the auxiliary cell is actually usable capacity. In the example shown here, a stack comprised of four 50 amp hour batteries with no balancing could be redesigned to instead have five 40 amp hour batteries, four plus the aux cell, with balancing. If there is a mismatch, the effective capacity of the stack with balancing will be higher, despite both systems having the same cumulative purchased capacity. Even if a smaller capacity aux cell is used, the effective capacity of the stack is always increased when compared to a stack with mismatch and no balancing. Here's the complete LTC3305 application schematic. And here in my hand is the LTC3305 demo board. As you can see, there are 10 FETs, the PTC, and a handful of R's and C's to program various timing and fault detection parameters. For more information on those, I encourage you to read the data sheet. The solution is completely standalone. You just need to hook it up to your four batteries stack and whatever you choose for the aux cell. You don't need a separate voltage monitor because the LTC3305 does that for you. And I hate to break it to you software guys, you don't need any software, micro, algorithm, or GUI. The LTC3305 does all that for you too. A single LTC3305 can be used to balance stacks of two, three, or four lead acid batteries. For stack heights greater than four, individual LTC3305s can themselves be stacked and interleaving allows for balancing every battery in a high voltage stack up to hundreds or thousands of volts. Stacks composed of 6 volt or 12 volt nominal batteries are supported and balancing can take place independent of whether the stack is being charged, discharged, or at rest. There are additional benefits which active balancing provides beyond just extending the life of your battery pack. For example, since stack capacity is normally limited to that of the weakest battery, active balancing extends runtime by delivering charge to that weakest battery during stack discharge. This is true for all battery chemistries, including lead acid. Another benefit is that you can now tap off the BAT1 node to power low voltage circuitry without fear of creating an imbalance. This is something you would never think of doing without balancing. In conclusion, the LTC3305 provides a simple, standalone solution for balancing lead acid battery stacks of any height. Active balancing will extend the life of your lead acid battery pack and increase runtime performance. The LTC3305 is the world's first and only IC on the market to perform this function. For more information, visit us at linear.com. Thank you.